So now that we've learnt our first inversions, we're going to go to second inversions, which are the exact same principle, uh, but we're going to um, take the first inversion chords and we're going to treat them exactly like we did the root positions um, to make the second inversion. So this is a first inversion C, E, G, C. We're going to remove the bottom note, the E, and replace it with the top note, E. So now we've got G, C, E. And that's exactly the same principle for F, where you would make C, F, A, and the exact same principle for G, where you'd make D, G, B. So what I want you to do is uh, just play around with those different variations and get used to them, and realize also um, how, thinking melodically, a lot of melodies focus on uh, being a stepwise melody, which means basically they use notes that are close together. So think how you can change chord with minimal movement to your hands. So for example, if I started with uh, a C root position, then I can get to F by doing, uh, well, aside from the root position, I can do two other ways. Um, both of which keep this C. I can do F in the uh, second inversion by just moving the top two fingers and keeping C in the bass. Or I could go to the first inversion but keep that C in the middle. So get used to how they sound. It's all still C to F. Similarly, if I took my uh, one, if my four, one, five, so F, C, G, if I went down, there's a lot of hand movement there, to there, to there. You know, it covers a lot of space across the keyboard. That's doing it root position. Uh, but if I did it a different way, for example, let's start with F in root position. And then keep C on the top. I could do C major first inversion and then G major second inversion by um, moving the top and bottom note but keeping the G in the middle. And what you need to do is listen to and appreciate that that is a way that that can sound because this and this is the exact same chordal structure. But the thing that makes it sound ever so slightly different is just that note that's on top, really, the note that we're tuning into. Which means that if we start to put melodies to things, uh, then we can start to pick out where the chords are just simply by what note happens to fall on the top. Uh, so, for example, we can sort of listen to something like this. Or maybe we could do this. do this. And it doesn't matter really because we've sort of played around with those inversions enough to know that, um, or to be able to hear that that's where the, mel where the chord structure is. So play around with them because they are good fun and once you get, get used to them you'll really start to have a, a basic understanding of um, of how a lot of songs are put together, both classical songs, traditional music hall, uh, and of course popular music as well.